Hi, I'm Chloe Chavardez. Welcome, and thank you for joining us on the European Space Agency Web TV. Until now, we've been using ESA's virtual studios to discuss Earth observation, but today, I like to talk about Europe's newest rocket, Vega, on which all types of small satellites, including science and Earth-observing missions, will ride into orbit. What we're watching now is Vega's spectacular first launch at the beginning of February, with the heavy Ariane 5 and the medium Soyuz already lifting off from Europe's spaceport in French Guiana. The small Vega has now joined the family. To get a closer look, I have the pleasure of speaking with Stefano Bianchi, the Vega program manager here at the European Space Agency. Hello and welcome. To begin with, let me congratulate you and the whole team for the successful maiden launch, which marked the end of nine years of development. Could you tell us more on how the program began and the need for a small launcher? Yes, the program began in, uh, as a European Space Agency program in 98, but it was a program which started in Italy in, as a background of the 60s when Italy started to, to put in orbit the first, um, one of the first European satellites in the 60s with a scout launcher, from, uh, first from the US and then from the San Marco platform in Kenya. So Italy had this, uh, let's say, this will uh, to develop uh, a new launcher, and they started with several studies of small launch, and then they, come, they came in uh, 98 uh, with this proposal to ESA. So we took uh, some years uh, to, let's say, to focus on the configuration of the launcher, and the real development started then in 2003. And this first launch is also known as the qualification flight. What exactly does that mean and what were the main goals that you were trying to reach? Qualification flight, let's say, it's really the, the ultimate test of a launcher because for the first time we try to test what we can on ground. So we test all the engines, we test the, the software, we have a simulator. We perform qualification flight at a system level, but then at the end you have to put everything together and see if everything together works. Mm -hmm. And this is what happens with a qualification flight. You put also together with a ground segment because also an important uh, point is uh, to launch on time. And this is what we achieved uh, on that uh, great day, which was uh, February 13, when we launched exactly at the right time and with a wonderful flight. And uh, as you mentioned, the flight tested new technologies. What would you say were the biggest challenges that you and your team have had to overcome? We, I have to say we had a lot of challenges because it, it is a completely new launch system. So a new rocket, uh, new ground segment, uh, new industrial organization as well because it's, uh, it is uh, an Italian prime contractor. We did not have any experiences in, uh, in launcher system. These were the main challenges. That we, then we had also challenges in terms of technologies. The choice we did at the beginning to, let's say, to limit the development cost was to reuse as much as possible what is available from Ariane 5, but we focus on the new technology, in particular for solid rocket boosters, with uh, composite cases, so composite case enable to have a better performances because we have a lighter structure and lighter structure means that we have a motor which has better performances. And this was a great challenge because we have the biggest monolithic composite case motor in the world for the first stage and the higher mass fraction motor on the third stage, so the Zephyr 9 has the biggest content of propellant in terms of ratio between overall mass and propellant. So we had two very interesting motors in terms of technology and both worked uh, very well. Then we had also technology on the, nozzle, on the nozzles of the solid rocket motors in terms of uh, new materials. So materials of a nozzle have very uh, have to comply with very stringent thermomechanical characteristics because they have to uh, work at uh, very high temperature and provide still strength. So it's a very difficult issue and we develop new materials in particular for the P80 and the electromechanical actuators which are for the P80 the most powerful electromechanical actuator in the world. 
and nine passengers were on board. Could you tell us a little bit more about those? Yes, the decision to... We have nine small passengers, let's say, because from the experience of maiden flights that unfortunately normally have uh, troubles, let's mm -hmm. say, and from the nightmare of a cluster launch with our M501, it was always, always decided for maiden flight not to put uh, costly payload. We have this uh, Lares satellite, which is a wonderful scientific experience from ASI. Is a, uh, Lares means laser relativity satellites, and its objective is to measure the land steering effect, which is a consequence of Einstein general relativity theory. So we will uh, basically measure through laser, through laser sent from Earth, on the laser, this sphere, which has uh, a diameter of about 40 centimeter and uh, a very high mass. So it's a very dense uh, object of about 400 kilos. In this sphere, we have um, some uh, laser reflectors, so mirrors, diode mirrors, which will reflect uh, the laser sent from Earth will come back on Earth parallel and we can measure exactly the time this laser, the laser arrives on the, on the satellite and measure exactly where the satellite is and the impact of this land steering effect. Then we have um, another satellite of uh, technology satellite from University of Bologna and seven uh, CubeSat from uh, seven different uh, European universities. And this, I think, was a very uh, a wonderful opportunity for um, university, for students, uh, to do something uh, in space and do it and see the result of their work. Because uh, at the end, what, what we do for a young generation, uh, for a young generation of engineers, is fundamental because we are building the future of, uh, of space. And it's the best school is to, to do something and see the results of your work. And this was a decision taken uh, for this uh, Vega made up flight. And on a more personal note, now that the launch is behind us, are there any critical moments in particular during the launch, which lasted about an hour, an hour and a half, from liftoff up to the release of the satellites, that you could share with us? Any moments of doubt or tension? But you can imagine that uh, nine years of work uh, condensated in, uh, concentrated in uh, one hour, one hour and a half in particular with a liftoff, which is a very tense moment, is uh, something which will remain in your, in your earth. And uh, it was quite, uh, quite difficult in particular at the beginning because there are so many things which can go wrong. And if something goes wrong, you are dead because the, the launcher is destroyed or uh, you lose your mission. And in particular, the first phase of, um, with the atmospheric phase, we know with the first uh, stage, it's, uh, it's really the, the, the phase in which the, you have the highest number of, uh, of potential problems. It went perfectly well. Then we had, uh, uh, we, we had almost a health attack when we had the separation of the, of the third stage because we, we lost uh, for a few seconds um, the telemetry, so meaning that we had no data from the launcher and we thought that uh, there was a problem on, on the engine. So suddenly said, oh, we have no more data from, uh, from the engine, no more data from the launcher. We said, oh my God, it's <laughs> We are really in trouble, and uh, after a few seconds, the uh, direct directrice des opérations mm -hmm. starts to say, trajectory is nominal, nominal. pressure of engine is nominal, so it was a, a huge relief, and the mission went on up to the end. Uh, and uh, what is really amazing is that we have uh, really good results now. We are at three weeks from the launch and we went through a detailed analysis of the data and uh, a part of this loss of telemetry, all the rest went perfectly well. And so now what comes next? I understand that Vega is already booked for six missions? Yes, we have, uh, we have quite a lot of new missions because 
the fact of having a European launch which uh, starts some time is a fundamental thing because we have no European launch for this class. But everybody was expecting the first launch because uh, reliability is the first uh, issue for a customer. So now customers are starting to come to us uh, and uh, I think we will be very booked uh, for the future. And we have this uh, five uh, Verta flights and we have also another flight which is already booked uh, and we are working in this week so with uh, other potential customers but uh, I think that the results of the first flight and uh, the fact also that we launched it perfectly on time and uh, the fact that we are also always very transparent on what is happening on our launch uh, is a big incentive for our customers. Well, Stefano, again, congratulations for this fantastic launch and thank you for joining us today. And that marks the end of this special edition revisiting the first liftoff of Vega, the new member in Europe's family of launchers. I hope to come back to you in the near future to make you discover another exciting topic. In the meantime, if you want to know more about space, you can visit our website at www.isa.int. From the ISA Web TV studios, I'm Chloe Chavardez. <laughs>